school is almost over, many teens may be looking for a summer job. But as Meredith Hackle reports, some places are having a harder time hiring teens. Ah, summertime. It's the season most teens and kids look forward to. But it's also a time when employers are looking to hire teens for seasonal work. During the summertime, across the Twin Cities, we'll hire 8,000 team members to fill our Life Cafe Bistro, which is our poolside food. Um, we will fill our lifeguard stand. We will fill our summer camp with seasonal hires. And Lifetime is just one employer of hundreds across the metro that are still looking for summer employees. The job market is really tight right now. Unemployment is at historic lows. Uh, and so the teen market typically has a higher unemployment rate and so being able to draw on that pool of talent is really critical. For potential employers like the city of Brooklyn Park, teens play a vital role in seasonal work. Teen workers are really important to our workforce, both for the city of Brooklyn Park, but for a lot of our employers as well. But several potential employers are having a harder time finding those teens due to the historically low unemployment rate. At Lifetime, some hiring perks have helped to overcome that. One of the great things about Lifetime is we do offer competitive pay along with some amazing benefits. So you get a Diamond Premier membership, which is access not just to your home club, but to every club across the country. Along with that, you get discounts in the Life Cafe, the Life Bistro, you get discounts in the Life Spa, and then you also have discounts on all of our club programming. Those benefits attract lots of teen workers, but for other employers, there is a lack of skills that certain companies may need. Often there's a disconnect between the types of skills that employers are saying they're looking for and the skills that exist out in the market. The city of Brooklyn Park has a program called Brooklink, which helps teach high school students skills they will need at a potential employer. Programs like these are vital, since economic development experts say a shortage of workers will eventually affect the economy. I would say it's at a crisis mode in terms of just not having enough workers to serve the available positions, and it will affect our economy over time. Meredith Hacker, CCX News. The Plymouth City Council wants to prevent the city from becoming what one council member called a transit desert. Plymouth has the fourth largest economy in the state and a common concern from employers is getting their workforce to Plymouth. A 2014 study identified Highway 55 as a possible bus rapid transit corridor. The Plymouth City Council says they would support more efforts to look into that option. If we don't have something on the plan, we're not going to get anything. And other areas of the, the metro will develop, and I'm, I have this overarching concern about our ability to make sure we have good, good access for people to get to the jobs in Plymouth. As of right now, there's no price tag attached to this action. The Brooklyn, Center fire, the Brooklyn Center has a new fire chief. Todd Berg is no stranger to the city. He was born and raised in Brooklyn Center. He also has experience both working for the fire and public works departments. I am going to miss this place. I've been here. This has been 20 years of my life at Public Works. Todd Berg knows the Brooklyn Center Public Works Department like the back of his hand. So the last couple days is uh, cleaning out this office. While the supervisor of streets and parks has a lot of memories, he says he won't miss getting up in the middle of the night during a snowstorm. Trying to pretend to be a meteorologist during the winter. Um, you know, some of those things are the things I won't miss going to this new job. For the past six months, he's juggled two jobs, continued his duties with the Public Works Department, and also served as interim fire chief. There's a lot of first things I'd like to do as chief. Berg has firsthand experience with the department. He's been a part-time firefighter for almost 30 years. Started in 1989, fresh out of high school. With all that experience under his belt, Berg hopes to bring stability to the department. I wanted to be chief because I think I have something to offer the fire department and the citizens of Brooklyn Center. His passion and purpose comes from wanting to help people. We meet people on their worst days and it's rewarding for me to have an opportunity and the time and knowledge to help people out on their worst days. One of his top priorities is addressing recruitment and retention. To better represent what our city looks like on the fire department. Berg says he's excited to finally start his new job as chief.
I look forward to the challenge and the opportunities that lie ahead for us. The city of Asu also wants to hire more firefighters. The Asu Fire Department currently has 21 firefighters, but they have room for up to 30. It's an on-call position that requires you to be at least 18 years old and live or work within seven minutes of the fire station. Interested candidates have to pass a background check and physical ability test. It's really just about people helping their neighbors um, is, is how we think about it. Um, you know, if your neighbor called out for help, you'd want to run to their, to their aid. And, and joining the fire department really just allows you to be trained and equipped to, to really make an impact. The city's accepting applications through August 13th. Some Park Center High School students celebrated a notable achievement this week. They are officially book published authors. In order to be like a Hmong person, like you need to learn how to write, read, and speak. And like that's a thing that like many of our students, like we're trying to learn right now. Students involved in the Hmong language for native speakers class published three books this year and celebrated the release of their third book. A teacher enlisted the help of a Hmong hip hop artist to engage students. I think I want it to happen to him because he has a powerful story to tell and a powerful story to help shape the students that I have in my classroom. We leave you with sounds from the celebration at Park Center High School. April Grove and Champlain Park came into the Section 5 4A softball tournament as the top two seeds. After the Crimson beat the Rebels earlier in the tournament, Champlain Park battled back to reach the championship round. Top seed Maple Grove needing one win to advance to state, Champlain Park needing two. In the bottom of the third, Maple Grove's Jade Tomashek singles up the middle. Mavis Sachs comes in to score the first run of the game as Maple Grove is up 1-0 after three. The Rebels load the bases in the top of the fifth inning with two outs, but Emma Berge hits it well, but right at right fielder Kate Kapsner, and she catches it for the third out. Tomashek has the biggest hit of the game in the home half of the fifth inning as she pounds it to deep left field and it gets to the fence. Corin Palanch and Dorothy Duick score as Tomashek doubles, and Maple Grove has a big three to nothing lead. And pitcher Ava Duek makes that lead hold up, throwing a shutout as the Crimson advance to the state tournament for the eighth time. 3-0 Maple Grove is the final, but Ilde St. Margaret's is also headed to state in Class 3A softball. In baseball, the Section 6-4A tournament continues into the week ahead. Two local squads have played their way into the winner's bracket final. Third seed Hopkins met second seed St. Louis Park in the second round. Top of the first and the Royals' Calvin Harris slices a hit to the gap in left center. Jason Schumacher and Wyatt Nelson score and it's two to nothing in favor of Hopkins. Harris comes through again in inning number three as he'll ground a single to right field scoring two more runs. Hopkins gets seven runs in the inning. They go on to win it 11 to one in six. In the first game of the second round, top seed Wyzetta faced number four Armstrong. Armstrong's Drew Eid drops a single into center field in the top of the first. Tyler Shell scores as the Falcons get a lot of base runners early. In the third, Eid with a bunt and the throw to first is wide. Jordan Page scores and the Trojans are shaking the field early. It's 2-0 Falcons after three. Wyzetta loads the bases with no outs in the fifth. But they get just one run as Carter Tibbetts lifts a fly ball to right. Cullen Stamp tags up to score, and Keegan Nickel just avoids the tag at third base. It's 2-1 to one Armstrong. A.J. Sternix escapes the jam as he gets the last batter he faces, and Colin Spellman finishes with two innings of strong relief. Hopkins and Armstrong meet Monday afternoon in the winner's bracket final at Hopkins, with the winner going to the section final. Wyzetta is still alive as well. Section tournament play is underway in high school lacrosse, too. One local team scored a huge comeback in the opening round. Eighth seed Champlain Park hosted Anoka in a first round game in section seven. Anoka goes up big. Troy Wahlberg with the high shot for a seven to two Tornadoes lead in quarter number three. But Champlain Park fights back strong. Roy Johnson with a hesitation move and he'll go high with the shot to tie the game at 8-8 with under two minutes to play. 
And in overtime, it's Johnson doing it again. He dodges the defenders and turns to score with the low shot as Champlin Park wins 9-8. They were, though, eliminated by Centennial in the quarterfinals. Section semifinals in all local sections are set for Monday. Amir Coffey announced this week that he'll stay in the NBA draft and forego his senior season at the University of Minnesota. There was some speculation Coffey might remove himself from the draft and return to the Gophers for one more season, but that deadline passed. Last season, Coffey averaged 16.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game while leading the Gophers to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Coffey chose the U after a standout career at Hopkins High School in which he was named Mr. Basketball as a senior. Now, draft projections have Coffey being picked anywhere from 45th to possibly being unselected. The NBA draft is coming up June 20th, and that's at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. That's all for sports.